I, um, I actually wrote a first book in my early 20s, uh, part of it here in Paris, actually. Oh. I, I was here for a brief period. Um, and I'd left New York briefly for the first time. I'd been living there at the time to come to Europe to write. And the book wasn't successful. It was, um, it was very earnest, uh, youthful um, in, in that way. But it served as a great apprenticeship for me. And you published it? Uh, it was never published. Oh, okay. Thank God. <laughs> um, but however, from that point going forward, even though I did other things, uh, screenplays and acting, and some directing, I always thought of myself primarily as an author, as a writer, um, in terms of how I would reinterpret the, the world. Um, and it, it felt like I worked on other books since that I would throw away, um, that you would get so far with them and you realize there's no novel here, it, it, it's not there, um, and you, you kind of hit a, a dead end and you have to give up and you start again. Um, so primarily I've always thought of myself as a, as a, as a writer first. Yeah. You don't know? You know, it's funny, you know, the Irish card, as it, as it seems sometimes, gets trotted out when it suits and discarded when it doesn't. Um, <laughs> so, and I'm sure I'm, I'm guilty of, of doing just that. Um, it's interesting, though, to come at literature as an Irishman because you, you are very aware of this very strong historical uh, reference. Um, it's unavoidable, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if that helps or, or, or not, but it's, uh, it's something you're aware of. Certainly in some, in, in some ways, I, I know for myself, I had to leave that behind, mm -hmm. both physically and mentally, um, and, and discover French writers, American writers, Russian writers, you know, and go and live in other places, if not physically again, you know. Uh, intellectually or academically. Mm. It's hard to know. I think, for me, I, I, I seem to think in a visual manner. Yeah. Um, and there's this sort of a central image that you're trying to bring into the light. I saw a painting about ten years ago uh, in Glasgow, in a museum in Glasgow. Uh, it was a Rembrandt. In a back room, and it was called the carcass of an ox, um, and it stayed with me. It's a, it's a beautiful image. It's very, it's kind of disturbing, but it's beautiful, and it's an almost crucified carcass. It's enormous, and there's a small boy in the background looking around the window, or around the, the doorway, and it stayed with me for, it had a profound effect on me and it stayed with me for a while afterwards and I thought, who is the boy, who gets the meat, who is the meat? Mm. Um, and it started from that place and it gave us Sonny in the butcher shop, it gave us Sonny wanting to be a painter, um, but the quality of the paint was very important to me as well and I like this, I like this cross-pollination between the arts where mm. I look at a painting and I see a narrative, and uh, a painter reads a book, sees a painting. you know, it's, 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 it's a lovely, lovely thing. Actually, in, in many ways, it's French cinema, modern French cinema, that is his first indication that there might be a sensual world out there. Um, and it's very important for him. And in some ways, given the environment of Dublin in the 80s, He's a bizarre person because of it, and is mocked. He's going to see what his friend Sharon refers to as a reed underneath, which is what, which is what people in Dublin call the, uh, you know, films from in different languages. You know, a reed underneath. So yeah. I understand that terrain. Uh, I understand Ireland in the 80s, um, and for people who don't, it was a particularly difficult time. Um, I think it's difficult in a new way, um, but it's, certainly at that time it was very difficult. Um, 
And I left at 16, I went to New York. Um, I went to New York and the reason I got into America was because they looked at me and they thought, he's too young, he couldn't possibly be not on holidays, on vacation. Um, I wasn't, but that's what they believed. But, you know, there was a mass exodus from Ireland at that time of immigrants. Um, and you had people who had, you know, university degrees flipping burgers. Um, so, as a young person growing up watching that, you certainly feel that your possibilities are very limited, irrespective of who you are. Now, if people who had the privilege of going to university can't get jobs, in a working class background, no. you're really in trouble, and you know you are. And we meet Sonny at just that period where he's starting to understand how society functions um, and his place in it, you know. And, and the things that he wants or his aspirations are irrelevant. You know, um, in terms of biographical, not, I'll throw everything I've experienced at work um, shamelessly and what other people experience too, you know. It is important. Yeah. The first, the first sentence of the book is the world is a frightening place, um, and it is, from Sonny's perspective. Uh, death is everywhere in the novel. Mm -hmm. um, Sonny works in a butcher shop. In the first chapter, somebody is killed. And he sees a dead body, and he realizes that people die, and the life is precious. Um, and it's a vital part of the book. And Sonny, again at that age, has, is filled with hopes and dreams and, 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 and aspirations. Um, and it, I, it is as alive as somebody can be. And so the tension comes from the struggle between what surrounds him and who, what's inside of him, if, if that makes sense. James Joyce, when he finished writing Dubliners in Paris, um, he talked about the language of the book um, and he said that he wanted the language to have a, a scrupulous meanness, um, that it, meaning that it doesn't exaggerate one way or another. Um, and that phrase stayed with me. Mm -hmm. that what you're left with is raw enough to be uncomfortable, but there's enough in there to allow it to be the flesh to be sensual. And so, yeah, it's, it's a vital part of the, the language, how much language, how it's expressed, they're vital components to the way the, the novel is structured. It was, it was, a, it was a larger piece, yeah. uh, which is how I like to work. And when it's all there, you just come in and cut out anything yeah. that's excess. Um, and uh, I think at least 150 pages were taken out. Um, but you see, you have to be careful too, because if you pull it back too far, you, you, it becomes too tight, it becomes, um, it becomes pretentious. Well, I, I, I thought of it in terms of music. Okay. With music, there's the beat and there's the next beat. But the space in between is where the emotion, I think, lives. And the challenge for me, or what I felt my challenge was to express with or using language things that can't be said. And I think it's particular to the Irish vernacular. I think we've really gotten this part down. We were experts in saying very little. Within the Irish vernacular, there, there, there is a thing that, there's a banter that the Irish do, and I'm sure again it's universal, where the language stays kind of pitched high, and it's a back and forth and back and forth. 
but you can only sustain it for so long and it dips mm -hmm. and everybody gets really uncomfortable and then it's brought back up again but it was the dip it was that section I wanted to live in because Sonny doesn't have that easy way that he describes other men have that was the football I wasn't a great da -da 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 -da. and it was this bam ba -ba 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 -ba. and he can't do it so he's stuck in the pause, so he makes the people around him uncomfortable. And he's aware of that. And he has actually a great sensitivity to his environment. And again, part of being that age, of being, you know, just stepping into manhood is that you still bring with you from childhood this truth, but he can't defend it. I wanted the story to live outside of facts, and Vera is a key part of that. Facts aren't important. She, she can only think in terms of memory. When she thinks of the world, it's a memory, it's backwards. And when Sonny thinks, it's a forward motion. And so they sit like bookends. I wanted to explore how people can come together. Mm who we choose to love, how we choose to love them, what intimacy is. And I realized that the facts are irrelevant, that the intimacies come from a different place. And in terms of Sonny and Vera, he protects her, he, he saves her from an attempted suicide early on in the book. And really what happens then is he becomes a part of her secret. And that's the first intimacy, do you know? So the facts don't matter, where we are doesn't matter, but there is actually this one, and I think only one hint as to the era, and it's the film he goes to see. That's the only one. Yeah. I struggled with that, I almost didn't, but I wanted, I needed it, so I, I allowed it through, yeah, but, but it's the you, only detail. You just say it's Betty, Yeah. if... If we know it's uh, know. 37 de matin from That's the right. next yeah, yeah, yeah. we know it's after <laughs> this film, but... <laughs> I... a revival, I suppose, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, hopefully we're exploring at the same time, in the same way, that he is. So these books are new to him, yeah. so he doesn't know them. And, and, and you know, we're, we're dealing with the limits of his knowledge. Yeah. Um, and again, that, that ties very much into class and what's available. Because I, you know, and I, I guess maybe I'll ask you about it again, but the, um, I, I was less interested in poverty or, you know, in terms of what's in the fridge, it was more what's 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 not on the shelves, yeah. you know, uh, the bookshelves. I was very reluctant to use it. In, in second person, I've seen successfully used in short form fiction, yeah. Yeah, short stories. Um, I think to stretch it over a novel is challenging for the reader because at a certain point you went to the door, you went to the kitchen, you went and got in the car, you go, I'm reading the book, I'm not doing any of those things, you're driving me nuts. Mm -hmm. So it's frustrating. So I couldn't understand why I kept going back to it. I tried it in first person, I tried it in omnipresent, third, and it didn't work. And I realized that what I was trying for wasn't in any way a pure second person. That the second person is a protagonist who cannot or will not yet come to terms with his own story. Um, and with doing it this way, there's an intimacy yeah. um, that's uncomfortable, I think, at times, and intentionally so. Um, and also, there's an accusation, yeah. you, 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 and there's, there's, it, it can be, can be molded to different emotions 
and let that ooze kind of just sit on set. Well, it, it's, it's interesting actually because it's been described as a love story by some. Yeah. And that's true at the end, but only at the end. Really, it, 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 the, the, there's a transcendence that has to happen before it becomes a love story, and it only earns it really at the end. Um, but Sonny's initial um, obsession, I suppose, with her is really born out of his own uh, idea of who she is. And so, because there's so few facts, you're always dealing in terms of what one feels. Um, and at one point, Vera almost apologizes to Sonny and she goes, someday you'll hate me for this. And he's, I, I won't. And she goes, you, he tells her he loves her, and she says, you, you need to know this isn't love. But he knows what he feels, and what he feels is authentic. It's true, do you know? Mm -hmm. um, and really, you know, because they have so much separating them, class, yeah. nationality, um, age. education, age, of course. Um, then the question has to be, well, what binds them? Mm -hmm. And actually, they really mirror each other a great deal. Um, they were very, very close. I suppose, really a question of... Uh, yeah, it's, it's, again, it's a question of intimacy. The best stories are impossible. Oh, she's you know? describing her, she gives a little bit about her past. Yeah. Sonny hounds her all the time for information, yeah, it drives her nuts. Yeah. And she, at one point she says to him, look, you tell the story, you make it up, and yeah. I'll believe it. You know? Yeah. But, but she tells him about two relationships that she's been in. One took a long time and ended, the other one was short and it ended badly. And he asks her, look, does it always have to be that way? And she goes, I don't know, for me. And what's, I think, upsetting about that is she's experiencing in that again, and here we are again. Mm -hmm. And we do, we're secular people, we go back to the same tragedies. Yeah, she, I loved, uh, Sharon was great because, yeah. you know, Right to right, because you know, between Sonny and Vera, it's so intense that Sharon really felt like because she's such a, a, a ball of energy and, and frustration and rage in some ways that she, you know, she expresses what he can't. Um, and she was terrific, she wrote herself, there was no work involved, she literally handed me herself, she was wonderful. Sonny looks at her and is terrified that the way he looks at her is the way he's seen. Mm -hmm. And he feels dreadful for her that that's the truth. And for himself as well. Do you know her? His, his mother is a different character altogether. Because she is possibly Sharon, if we met her in 20, 30, 40 yeah. years. Um, but she has the unenviable task of protecting her children from their own desires because she knows they simply can't have it. It's not available to them, um, whether she knows it consciously or not. And there's one point where Sonny brings a book he's stolen from Vera and um, sits at the table and, and it's de de described as, a, as an uh, incendiary device because it is, it's dangerous. And the mother knows it. Um, and she says to him, look, bloody books, come winter, it's lumps of coal is all. So she's very practical and she has to be. Um, and I think particularly with that kind of kitchen sink Irish mother drama, it's become a sort of poverty porn. And I wasn't interested in that because I think these are very real problems. Um, so it was, I, I wanted to be very careful that I never moved into character or 
you know, something untrue, you know, because, yeah. for, you know, we've seen it from the 60s along where we have mothers at kitchen sinks shouting and uh, I didn't want that. I wasn't, mm -hmm. I wasn't interested in that at all. I, I think in some ways what, what interests me is extremes and opposites. Yeah and how they, they clash off each other, you know? Um, Sonny falls in love with a woman and finds a person, you know? Uh, they free each other by her allowing him to take an action and him letting her go. Um, and and it, 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 it's vital in some ways to, um, to have these tensions and the, the difficulty again is, I suppose, you can never directly speak to them. Um, and it's, it's like that kind of conversation, that banter I'm talking about within the Irish vernacular, where what's not said is more important. What we're, we're trying to move around, even though it's apparent and, and, and direct and, and visible, we, we move around it all the time. Um, and I think people tell you more about themselves by what they don't say. It's, well, it's certainly about people who don't get what they want. Mm -hmm. But, I actually think it's a very hopeful story in another way. Mm -hmm. Because Sonny takes a risk, because he learns to take an action, and she gives him permission to do that. You know that it's going to be okay, that he's transformed by taking an action. It's going to change everything. I suppose I was interested, yes in desire, yes in obsession, but also together and aloneness, how people occupy the same space separately. Mm. Um, Sonny's in a household, but he's not there at all. Um, and within their relationship, they both drift. Um, and Sonny in his mind drifting towards her is as much as a fantasy as her drifting into the past away from him. Um, but the hunger is still there. People want what they want. Um, and I, hopefully, I, I hope at least it's, it's a story that doesn't carry any morality or judgment yes. on who these people are. Because I really, I was really, it was really important to me that we see an entire image of them. Um, and I think things like, you know, pseudo-eroticism and pornography sits over in the place where we see snapshots. What I love about, it's one of the last art forms where the reader and the writer meet in this very private space. And they both work at coming to the conclusions. Um, Sonny is, very, like, again, if you go back to that opening line, the world is a frightening place, Sonny's hypervigilance of the world comes from a panic, it comes from a fear of what the world is, and also that he would, heaven forbid, reveal something about who he is or what he wants, because hopes or desires or longings they're very dangerous if, if people have that kind of information about you because it can be used against you. As Sonny becomes closer to Vera, his own family and his greater circle, the guys who work in the butcher shop, all crowd around and warn him that that girl's making a fool of you. You don't move outside of the tribe. And if you do, they bring it in. But again, if you go back to mythology and you talk about something like the hero's journey, you know, the hero, what he does is, and what everyone talks about is, that he goes to the underworld mm -hmm. and he has to, he has this kind of uh, challenge. But what they don't speak about is that when he comes out from that and he has the information or the wisdom and he brings it back to the tribe, most of the time they'll kill him because they don't want that information. And that's part of the fear 
is that somehow Sonny will start to see them differently and then they, their world is challenged and it starts to crumble. Um, so that was a very important part of the book. They, you know, and actually, when he goes out and he works with his father, they're always building walls together and it seems random but it's, it's, it's a very important image in terms of this yeah. kind of fortification that happens. Um, in some ways, Sonny wants to be his father's son. He wants to be part of his community. He wants that ease with other men. But he's also peeked over the wall and he knows there's things over there. And he has the, that's the tension, that's the challenge for him is you can have one, but you can't have both. And once you cross that wall, there's no going back. And he knows that. Well, I think that's ultimately, and in, in, in that section you read earlier about him trying to be heroic, what he's missing yeah. there that he, I hope at some point comes to is that the heroic nature of men has to start, it's an inside thing, it's not an exterior that comes to you. Um, that actually, what women already know, he has to learn, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but I do think actually you hit on something very important as well, is that the secrets his decision to hold on to that and not reveal it to his family. And later on, he has a little hiding place where he puts his cigarettes and his yeah. money. And his father, when he comes home from gambling, he runs upstairs and he hides his money. And everybody's hiding. And then his, his exchange with Vera is initially a secret. She lets him into his secret. Mm -hmm. Sharon suggests maybe something at her home life that's a secret. And everybody is carrying these secrets around. I didn't want, I was careful, I didn't want to get too weighed down by the choices he was making. Mm -hmm. Because it become, it, again, it pulls the novel in a different direction. You know, Certainly, uh, Closely Observed Trains was a very important book for me when I was young. Mm -hmm. But also, this a physical attribute um, he notices, I don't want to get too far into the detail of it because I don't agree. Yeah, of course. But he notices Vera as a, as a, a physical attribute that she has that he couldn't know unless he'd read that book. Mm -hmm. So that was important. Um, with Myla Sarner, it, it was, you know, in terms of using class and stuff like that. I also thought where he is in his learning, what he's interested in, where he is in the world, if there's going to be growth, it'll come through this, these, these works. Um, so it was important that there were at least books that he would relate to um, in, in, in some way. It's yes, I suppose it, 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 it is, but again, I, I, yeah, I, I caution myself because I, I don't want to pull too far over. <laughs> and again, yeah. it's where, you know, author as authority comes in and goes, oh, this is what this yeah. means, and I don't want to do that. Yeah, I want to but, I mean, they weren't randomly picked. Oh. I, I'll go that far. <laughs> okay. It wasn't just what was next on the bookshelf. No. Yes, yeah, yeah. You and it's it's um, it's difficult. Very busy yeah. since this this, this has come of out. Course. Um, so that's a challenge to try and get space. It's time around the space where you work. But actually, um, yeah, no, I've, I've made I've made. I'm pleased. I'm up to sort of around the page ninety mark, which is a nice, comfortable place. And, I try and work, I work most mornings from about 5 to 7 and then I rewrite in the afternoon um, and I'm really a slow writer because I throw everything away. Not in a hurry either, I, I would hate, it's the one area of my life I haven't ever been in a hurry in and I, I feel I'd like to hold.